Hello viewers, good morning. Today we will discuss the topic wetland biodiversity part 2 which includes the floodplain ecosystems, the rice wetland, oxbow lake, swamp and the mangrove ecosystems. In this module, detailed biodiversity descriptions, the flora and the fauna and the human impacts or how these wetland ecosystems have been polluted or degraded will be given on the floodplain ecosystem, the rice wetland, oxbow lakes that are found in the north of India, swamp, the mangrove ecosystem which again includes the fresh water, brackish water and the estuarine wetlands. So what do we mean by a floodplain ecosystems? As the name indicates, floodplain basically means flat or it's a nearly flat land which is adjacent to a stream or a river and this experiences periodic flooding, maybe even due to rainfall. The whole system or the ecosystem gets submerged during the flood phase and it dries out during the low water phase or when the water amount is less. The biodiversity contained in these systems include the phytoplanktons and the zooplanktons. Planktons are basically drifting organisms, phyto indicates plant, so they are plant like drifting organisms or zoo animal like drifting organisms. The macrophytes which are large enough to be seen by the naked eye, invertebrate and vertebrate aquatic life and the floodplains sustain around more than 100 times uh, the species diversity when compared to a river or a stream. The type of fishes which are found here include the bony tongues the caracans of the Amazon, the Amazon uh, floodplain uh, ecosystems are one of the largest systems, the carps and the barbs of the African and the Asian rivers. The floodplain biodiversity mainly we can find in three different places which includes in India we can see the Indo-Gangetic or the Brahmaputra floodplain where we find the major Indian carps or the fishes. The Amazon floodplains these will contain the cyclids and the caracans, African floodplains again the same. The others are a bit common for all the three floodplains which include the amphibians which are frogs and salamanders, reptiles, uh, the snakes, turtles, water monitors and crocodiles, birds, different species of cormorants, the pelicans, fishing eagles and flamingos can be spotted, otters, hippopotamus and the sloths are some of the mammals that could be spotted in a floodplain ecosystem. The Amazon floodplain forest. Now these represent 4% of the Amazon basin area. They are highly productive areas and they receive rich sediment from the Andes mountains and they transform the landscape into very productive systems with its vast array of unique plant and animal life or the flora and the fauna. Every year a large amount of these Amazon forests are covered by flood waters uh, by the major rivers that is the Amazon river. Now the Amazon rivers are the most threatened of all the ecosystems in South America mainly due to logging, the forest clearing activities, mainly the human induced or anthropogenic factors uh, are involved uh, in the threatening of these very critical and beautiful ecosystems. The cattle ranching as cattle have no uh, place so they mainly occupy these uh, wetland systems for grazing. The over exploitation of fisheries even in the fishy aquarium trade. So the over exploitation of fishes and exporting some of the ornamental fishes to other countries is also threatening the ecosystems. Intensive logging and selective exploitation of some trees like the kapok tree, the virola, they also accelerate deforestation. In the area of Peru, the oil exploitation is also uh, one of uh, serious activities which pose threat to the floodplain forest. Kaziranga National Park which is situated on the floodplains of the Brahmaputra river in India. Uh, this habitat is also a direct consequence of annual flooding and this is a nature reserve. Major part of the floodplain has partly or fully submerged grasslands. There are tall and short grasses which are found here. The tall grasses uh, which grow for 4 to 6 meters high and they grow on the slightly higher grounds which are partly submerged. They are excellent cover for a wonderful wildlife and we find the great Indian one horned rhinoceros uh, which is a major denizen of this park and this is also an endangered species of our country. Short grasses are found along the water bodies which are major fodder and uh, they support the deer, different varieties of deer basically, the swamp deer, hog deer, the samba deer and also elephants. The major mammals that are found here in the Brahmaputra basin are the wild buffalo, 
the wild boar, sloth bear, the gibbon, the rhesus macaque or the monkey, the capped langur and the slow loris. So you can see uh, what a variety of uh, species which are found in our own country. The top predators found include the Indian tiger, the Indian leopard, aquatic mammals include the Indian otter and the gangetic dolphin. This gangetic dolphin is also a highly endangered um, uh, organism and we find this uh, as uh, a photograph which is found whenever we talk about the uh, Ganges or the Brahmaputra basin. We find the gangetic dolphin often uh, found uh, which is telecast on the uh, television or the advertisements so that it gives us a feeling that we have to protect these endangered species. The reptiles include the checkered keelback, the water snake, the rock python, the king cobra, branded crate and lizards. The numerous lakes known as beals, they occupy the rest of the floodplains. The beals often uh, they are inhabited by the water hyac uh, hyacinth which are aggressive exotic species and these water hyacinth can actually liberate uh, toxins uh, which are plant toxins which can be uh, toxic to the animal life which is present in these waters. Again these toxins can also deplete the dissolved oxygen that is found uh, in the waters. So the fauna is not able to thrive. So fishes require a uh, high amount of oxygen uh, for their survival. So when the oxygen content is depleted, uh, the dissolved oxygen is depleted, then the faunal species find it very difficult to survive in these waters. So water hyacinth is an aggressive, exotic, invasive species which is also spoiling or degrading these systems. The flood waters deposit silk and fine sand which enrich the topsoil for major carps to breathe. So for the major fishes, the silt and the fine sand is very important which gives them a source of nutrient in order to survive. The beals are also home to a variety of turtles and terrapins. Now this is a picture of an Asian open bill stalk uh, which was photographed at Powai in Mumbai in one of the lakes. So the floodplains are also abode of major group of water birds. So we have a number of water birds and they are so nice and pleasant to see to a person's eye. So the beals are ideal wintering ground for migratory birds like the bar uh, headed geese, the grey spot billed pelican, the black necked stork, the uh, fishing eagles, stork billed kingfishers. So these are some of the birds or the water birds that are often a nice sight uh, to watch. Rice wetlands, so that was something about the flood plain ecosystems. The next part is a rice wetland. Rice wetlands are, as the name indicates, rice is grown in these uh, ecosystems. They are systems influenced and managed by the farmer's activities. They are temporary aquatic environments that can be considered as a successor of shallow marshes or swamp or a swampy uh, place. The, uh, mainly they consist of algae or blue-green algae. They also emit uh, methane and uh, they have uh, blue-green algae in alkaline soils. More than 589 species including protozoans have been reported from rice wetlands alone from Thailand. The invertebrates of these wetlands include oligochaetes, the crustaceans and the mollusk. Vertebrates, there are different types of fishes and that is why often in the rice wetlands which is in the south of India, they practice integrated farming uh, practices which include the rice fish farming practice or rice duck farming practices. Uh, so uh, it is like both the fishes and the rice can be grown uh, together and there are also alternate uh, type of farming arrangement where after one crop then you can grow the fishes or you can go for the duck farming and then again come back to the uh, rice uh, farming practices. So it's a very uh, beautiful wetland and this alone supports 90 aquatic species excluding the plants and the 90 aquatic species also are collected by the Cambodian farmers from the rice fields and they are used by the rural households. So they help uh, the livelihoods, so uh, the rice wetlands help people uh, in uh, socio-economic uh, thing and also in their uh, livelihoods of people. The Oxbow Lake and the swamps, these are crescent or the horseshoe shaped lakes that are uh, found alongside a winding river. Uh, mainly when we uh, go along uh, the roads uh, towards Jammu and Kashmir or to the Kashmir and Ladakh region, then we often find as a site to watch these oxbow lakes, these winding uh, lakes. Uh, the mature lakes actually flow across the wide river valleys. They meander and they uh, wind across the flat plains. These meandering streams actually they form large loops. 
So, the loops actually are found as circled ones uh, with uh, certain extensions and these loops again develop into the lakes that is called as the Oxbow lakes with time. The Oxbow lakes are also called as the billabongs in Australia and bayers in the USA. Beals are a home to a large number of aquatic animals and plants. Now, these pictures were photographed in uh, Mumbai again in the lakes, uh, wetlands and they include the pond heron and the cattle egret which are also good species which are exclusively found in the wetland ecosystems. The swamps, so these are wetlands that are featuring temporary or permanent inundation of large areas of land by shallow bodies of water. A swamp generally has a large number of elevated dry land which is referred to as hammocks. They are covered by aquatic or semi-aquatic vegetations. The vegetations of swamps, uh, they are found in different places. Now, in India, they are called uh, the reeds which are found in the parts of the Kaziranga National Park, the woody everglades of Florida, papyrus found uh, in the river Nile Delta swamp. The two main types of swamp are the true or forest swamps and the transitional or the shrub swamps. So, rich biodiversity exists in these swamp systems. Organisms like amphibians and reptiles are a feature of the swamp systems. The major swamps which are found in the world include the Pantanal swamp in Brazil, the Asma swamp in Indonesia and the Tigris Euphrates swamp which is found in the south of Iraq. Mangrove ecosystems, mangroves are very delicate ecosystems, they are trees or shrubs that usually grow in between high spring tide and mean sea level. The mangrove plants belong to different families but with a few special characteristics, they have the pneumophores or breathing roots, they have the viviparous seeding habit. Now from an in India perspective, uh, we have a very long coastal line, it is around 7500 kilometers long and from Andhra Pradesh to Tamil Nadu, all the mangroves, most of the mangroves I would say have been degraded or destroyed and this is because of again human induced uh, activities. Uh, the mangroves uh, sequester carbon, they emit methane and one of a very important uh, species which is found in the mangrove include the Exocaria agalocha which is used as a medicinal uh, plant and it has medicinal properties for treating leprosy. In Chidambaram, the mangrove trees are often worshipped and uh, they are uh, actually prayed and worshipped as a mark of respect uh, for gratitude. So, this way mangroves are a very uh, important systems. Again, uh, mangroves provide a number of uh, livelihood opportunities for ornamental uh, plant cultures for the tribal and the village uh, people who are settled over there and the village uh, people who are actually settled on the banks of this mangrove ecosystem have a good knowledge of these uh, tribal plants and medicines and how they can be used. For example, in the Andaman and the Nicobar, uh, the mud crabs which are endemic species found in this region are exported uh, to other countries. The 4 kg of this mud crab when it is sold uh, to Calcutta, they get uh, a monetary value of rupees 400. But the same 4 kg when this is exported and when it is sold uh, in Indonesia or Singapore or Bangkok, then the people living there, they earn around 20,000 to 40,000 rupees. So you can see how these mangrove mud crabs which are found in the Andama Nicobar are a source of livelihood for these poor people. So, that is why these um, we should actually prevent uh, these uh, mangroves from being degraded and the MS Swaminathan Foundation have taken steps and they have uh, afforestated and reforestated the uh, mangroves by the joint uh, forest mangrove uh, system uh, program uh, where these mangrove systems have been protected along the coastline of India. The major mangrove distribution are found in the Sundarbans and the Gangetic Delta in the Andaman and the Nicobar archipelago, river deltas of the Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri rivers. So what Ganga means to the north is actually Kaveri in the south. So these are the east peninsula rivers. The river deltas, the west peninsula rivers, the Gulf of Kutch in Kambe, the total area of the mangrove distribution in our country alone is 7 lakh hectares. The plant diversity, as I said there are a number of endemic species and flora and the fauna which have medicinal value and which are good for our uh, health. More and more people are now turning towards the organic uh, way of living and towards homeopathic and the 
a plant based uh, treatment when compared to the chemotherapy because uh, or the uh, chemical uh, medicines as we find that the plant compounds have less side effects though they take a longer time but still these are safe uh, for our health including the diabetic uh, drug uh, which is uh, now popularized and uh, patented by the CSIR which is found to be highly effective in a number of patients when compared to the chemical uh, drugs uh, which after a long time give other uh, side effects like uh, the leg pain or you know uh, um, the diabetic induced uh, chemical induced neuralgia which is occurring in the patients worldwide. So that is why rich biodiversity and rich uh, the plant species exist in these mangroves. Out of the recognized 110 or 115 species only 54 species of the mangroves are supposed to be the true mangroves and they are found in the mangrove habitats and rarely elsewhere. This is a mangrove uh, forest which is found in Kanchanaburi in Thailand where I visited uh, recently. There is a great diversity occurs in the mangroves of Malaysia, Indonesia and Papua New Guinea. They are salt tolerant plants and they have many adaptations to handle all the salt that gets into their system when the sea floods their roots uh, with each tide. So the roots can prevent the salt absorption by filtering them out. They concentrate salt in the older leaves that fall off and some of the species have salt glands which secrete the salt onto the surface of the leaves and it can be washed away by the rains. There are different uh, mangrove species, they can be found together also like the red mangroves is rhizophora species, orange mangroves with the prop roots, black mangroves often referred to as the Avicennia species, they are medium sized trees and they have pencil roots or pneumatophores, white mangroves and the buttonwood they are the very short uh, type of the trees also called as the conocarpus species, small trees or shrubs. The Sundarban mangrove forest which is the largest single block of the tidal halophytic, halo itself means uh, saline mangrove uh, forest in the world. It is named after the dominant mangrove species, the Heritaria forms which is locally known as the Sundari trees in India. They are seen in uplands where the saline uh, water inundation is less. So it lies in the delta formed by the confluence of the Ganges, the Brahmaputra, the Meghna rivers across South Bangladesh and West Bengal in India. This is the only mangrove that harbors the Indo-Pacific's largest predator that is the Bengal tiger. We also find other varieties of deers which include the Cheetal deer, the barking deer, wild pigs and the macaque monkeys. They are critical habitat for fishes and crustaceans, mudskippers, crabs, the hermit crabs and shrimps are also found in these systems. Otter, the mugger, marsh crocodiles, gangetic gavial, water monitor lizards, flapship turtles, the Indian pythons, the gangetic freshwater dolphins, bull shark, several species of water birds like the osprey, the white crane, egrets which you saw in uh, one of the figures before, kingfisher, the pelicans are some of the common birds which are encountered here. The Sundarban National Park of Bangladesh alone supports 120 species of fishes, 8 species of amphibians, 35 species of reptiles, 270 species of birds and 42 species of mammals. Sundarbans were the home to 500 Bengal tigers in 2004, one of the largest single populations of tigers. But now tigers are also being used as a tiger sport. They are being destroyed for their tiger skin, uh, which is uh, a craze among people. So that is why we need to protect uh, the tiger uh, populations in the uh, wild nature themselves or in the national uh, reserve and the parks. The saltwater wetlands, lagoons which is a body of comparatively shallow salt or brackish water, they are separated from the deeper sea by a shallow or exposed sand bank, coral reef or similar feature. The coastal lagoons or the saltwater lakes are formed by the build up of sand banks and they are usually connected to the sea by narrow creeks or the channels. Some of the major salt lakes in India include the Chilka lake which is found in Orissa, the Puliket lake which is very popular in Andhra Pradesh. In the Tamil Nadu border and also the Vembanad lake which is found in Kerala. The Vembanad lake also contains um, endemic varieties of fishes which are um, really uh, endemic to that region. The Chilka lake alone as a case study this harbors 225 species of fishes, prawns and the crabs. The major commercial fishes are the migratory fishes which include the mullets, the milkfish, Asian sea bass, the hilsa the thread fins, the Indo-Pacific tarpon, the 10 pounder. The common freshwater fishes include the butter catfish, 
the cellulite catfish. The major prawns include the tiger prawn, the Indian white prawn, the speckled shrimp, the kadal shrimp. The crabs as I already discussed in the Andaman and Nicobar, the mud crab or the mangrove crab, the blue swimming crabs, the reptile, monitor lizards, crocodiles, green and hawks bill turtles are uh, very uh, good to this region. The Iravadi dolphin is a flagstick species of this lake. The bottle nose dolphins are also visitors to this lake. So, we find two species of dolphins, one which is a flagship uh, dolphin of this lake. They again host 150 species of birds in the peak winter migratory season. They are the largest wintering ground for migratory birds in the Indian subcontinent. Avian fauna, uh, the 32 percent of aquatic fauna, 22 percent of the waders and the rest are uh, terrestrial birds which inhabit this ecosystem. The resident birds which are the major resident birds include the egrets, the herons, the cormorants, darters and the white ibis. Major migratory birds include the greater and the lesser flamingos, the gulls, the pelicans, geese, ducks, the sandpipers, teals and the coots. Rock and the brine pool. So, brine as the name indicates brine itself is saline and it is a concentration of hypersaline water which is denser than the surrounding lake water. So, that means it is 4 to 5 times the normal salinity of the sea water. It can be of any size the brine and the pools as the name indicates it is a pool. So, it can uh, range from a small puddle to a big lake and they have distinctive contours. So, it is also called as sea floor uh, lakes. They are common in the Gulf of Mexico. The biodiversity of these uh, pools include the sponges, sea anemones, polychaetes, the rock barnacles and the shrimps, snails, bivalves, octopus and starfish, sea urchins, fishes like rock skipper, gobbies, bennies and the clinids etc. The brine often contains high concentration of methane which provides energy to the chemosynthetic animals that live near the pool. So, chemosynthetic and the methane emission itself means that we find extreme forms of life here or uh, extreme biology. So, these animals are often called as extremophiles as they take the uh, chemical uh, components uh, for uh, their metabolism. So, the biology or their metabolism is often referred to as extreme biology or extremophilic uh, metabolic pathways are used for their survival. The coral reefs, fantastic coral reefs are found in the Andaman, Nicobar and the Lakshadweep in our country. They are formed by corals that is why they are called as coral and reefs. They are tiny marine creatures, they are capable of living in uh, warm. The temperature is an uh, important factor for their survival, warm uh, waters that receive plenty of sunlight. The corals secrete calcium carbonate and they have a symbiotic relationship with plant like algae or the cells which is called as zooxanthellae. So, the colors of the coral, actually coral themselves do not have any color for themselves. The color of the coral is due to the wonderful colors of the zooxanthellae or these algal species. They are endosymbiotic algae which carry out photosynthesis. So, they are autotrophic organisms. The corals provide them shelter and the zooxanthellae give them the color and the uh, nutrients for their reef building. So, that is why the coral get the rainbow like colors from these zooxanthellae. Zillions of coral calcium carbonate skeletons are cemented over the years and such reefs have been formed. They are located in the tropical oceans near the equator. They grow at depths shallow than 70 meters. Extremely they are sensitive to the temperatures. So, the optimum temperature that they require for their survival is 23 to 25 degrees centigrade. The Great Barrier Reef of Australia is one of the world's well known reef. Now, the corals are also threatened uh, due to the climate change and uh, the human induced activities. We come to those case studies later. The coral reefs are home to an estimated 25 percent of marine life. They are a rainforest of oceans. Fishes, shark and ray families, turtles, brittle stars, sea urchins are often found as reef biodiversity. File fishes, trigger fishes, puffers, the goat fishes, butterfly fishes and angel fishes are common here. Polychaete worms, benthic invertebrates, sponges, oysters, clams, the crabs, sea slugs and shrimps, starfish, jellyfish and sea anemones. So, these are the reef biodiversity. You can see the number of uh, the major genus which are found and you can imagine the number of species which would uh, be uh, supported by the coral reefs alone. So, the challenges to the coral reefs, they are fragile ecosystems 
and by the year 2030 that is 2030 almost 90 percent of the coral reefs will be threatened due to pollution, sewage discharge which is a common factor in the Lakshadweep islands, overfishing and blast fishing, rampant tourism and ecotourism, aquarium trade. The fishy aquarium trade is actually the worst trade which is being followed now to support the aquarium industry. Everybody is fond of having an aquarium at home and uh, normally the, uh, the fishes uh, which are endangered and vulnerable, we find the anomaly sucker fish which is an endemic fish. These are actually exported alive or dead and they are put into glass prisons where they can survive for a few days or they can die after a few weeks. So uh, this is the aquarium uh, trade and this has to be stopped because they need their natural environment to live and uh, the dead coral reef fishes also include the parrot fishes. Also many of the uh, coral medicines are got from the coral reef to treat a glaucoma which is uh, a characteristic of the blinding of the eye uh, caused due to intense uh, diabetes where the uh, peripheral uh, vision is lost by a patient. So now there is a coral medicine. So it is different if the medicines are extracted without causing harm to the coral reef but when the coral reef themselves are totally destroyed and then the medicines are taken off, then we can find the uh, kind of uh, destruction, uh, how these are being endangered. Again for hypertension, medicines are being got from the coral reef. Climate change is also causing an impact. So when it, temperature of the waters are going higher and the coral reef undergoes a phenomenon which is called as coral bleaching, where the zooxanthellae lose their color, they become totally white in color. So that is how this is also being and another important thing and at least in India, the coral mining or the black corals are actually uh, used for jewelry and the Mangal Sutra black corals, which any black uh, coral which is used to ward off illnesses. So this also if the black beads are, could be taken off without causing harm to the coral, then it is different. But if the whole reef is going to be destroyed for a beauty or for the Mangal Sutra or for uh, these beliefs then again we are actually uh, destructing our uh, natural uh, coral reef environment. So they are critically endangered wetlands. The wetlands themselves are critically uh, endangered. They are important in flood control. They are natural sponges. They are hotspots and cradles of the biodiversity. The recent floods which we have encountered in Chennai, Kashmir and Mumbai, these all have occurred due to unplanned urbanization. They are catastrophic and endangers the ecologically sensitive urban wetlands. So the species diversity is going down at a very alarming rate and it is high time that we together uh, learn uh, to understand the importance of these freshlands which hold 40% of the entire world species and 12% of all the animal species and we need to conserve these ecologically endangered uh, beautiful wetlands which uh, help human livelihoods and which are a lifeline or which is a foundation on which human life can exist.